we do fungo, we do a two-man fungo. Uh, I started that about 30 years ago uh, just because we got more reps. You know, you watch the old timers, they got one guy out there hitting fungo and they throw the ball around. Well, that's great, except he only got three ground balls and we got to play on this field that we've never played on before. So we started two fungo and uh, so they can get they can get 30 ground balls before the game starts. Uh, yeah. Can you explain fungo? Fungo? Fungo is simply me taking a special fungo bat, throwing the ball up, and hitting ground balls to the different uh, players. And, uh, you know, I can hit them slow, I can hit them to the left or right, so I can hit a variety of plays that he'll have to make uh, in the game and develop his skill. When you have two, two coaches going, or you have like someone over there hitting to the that field and some over here hitting to that side? Yeah, I have one coach right there and I'm hitting right here. I'll hit the third, he's getting a double play. He's hitting to the shortstop, he's getting one. Okay. And we have two first basemen. Uh, one on the bag for the double play and then one comes down the line. So I'll be going, you know, hey, let's get two. He's going, hey, get one. Boom, 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 then we'll switch. Then I'll hit the, I'll hit the shortstop, he'll get two. Third baseman gets one and we just work our way around. I mean, I can get you all that if you're interested in that type of thing. Uh, again, you know, it's probably a little higher at baseball. Uh, but just having, just having, you know, catching ground ball and throwing a ground ball and, and having fun and competition is great stuff. Any more defensive stuff? Throwing? Uh, I do have a question. So yeah. Is kids our age, we're at AU, tracking fly balls, is that, is that just a matter of repetition? Yeah. That's just hundreds and hundreds yeah. and hundreds. And, and you know, I mean, I've started with, uh, I've started with wiffle balls. I've started with rag balls, sock balls, uh, tennis balls. Uh, yeah. I was doing this type of thing several years ago, and I, we're talking about fly balls. And one of the coaches raised his hand and said, "Coach, that, that works pretty good, but let me show you how we do it." I said, "All right, I'm all ears." He goes, "We have our kids catch it over here." I said, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah. If they miss it, don't hit them." <laughs> it's okay, you know, maybe, but uh, I would rather they catch it here in the centers. Yeah, so if you get that kid that you're, you know, concerned about, uh, make a sock ball, make a rag ball, a tennis ball until they get the confidence of uh, handling that. Yeah, I mean, it, those little kids, we'll just sit here all day and just underhand them, throw them fly balls and go get it. In camp, we, we line them out there and, and we call it the ESPN plays. And we'll just throw them ball and they, and they run their hat comes off, they catch it, you know, and then they get it. We score them 10 or eight or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, that's hard. On that, uh, again, it's probably a higher level, but if you can teach them to run on the balls of their feet, it levels their eyes out a little bit. When they run on their heels, they get this bouncing and it makes it even more difficult. Uh, in fact, I have a kid that plays on the varsity. I just told him that yesterday and he was like, wow that really works you know and here he is here he is a junior and had never heard that before so uh just trying to be soft on your feet soft on your feet defense anything else cut off drop step sir cut off drop step cut off uh y'all do cut offs yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah awesome uh our cut off obviously is most of our stuff is done by the shortstop, uh, third baseman, first baseman. Okay, I know some little leaguers they use second baseman maybe, but at our level we don't. It's, it's all the same. We want to be visual and loud. Okay, so if the ball sits to the outfield, I want to have my hands up. I want to be hollering. I want him to know. It's my job as the cutoff man to get close to the spot I need to be. It's the person I'm going to be throwing to's responsibility to help me. But the biggest thing we see is they don't put their head on a swivel. It's our terminology. So if I'm running to be the cutoff man, I gotta, I gotta know where the catcher's at. I gotta know where the left fielder's at. So I'm running to my position, looking. I can get within a step or two. Now he may say left one. He should never have to say left five. Okay, I should be able to get to the, to the spot I need to be close. Uh, we're gonna get our hands up and then we're gonna read the throw. We want the longest throw at our level to be from the outfielder. He'll make the longest throw. So our cutoff people will be back here on the grass, okay? Unless the ball goes to the fence, of course. But if it's a normal ball, 
we should be back on the grass probably 10 or 12 steps here. As we read the ball, then we're going to get in a position. We always want to catch the baseball sideways. So as the ball's coming in, I'm going to adjust. I may go over here. I may go over here. And then as I get to the spot I want to be, I want to be sideways and I want to be moving to the place I'm going to throw the baseball. Okay? Sometimes that isn't always possible. Sometimes I have to go get a ball that's going to short hop. But ideally, I'd like to be moving, 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 and I'd like to cheat as much as possible with my feet. So if the ball's coming, I'm trying to have my foot in the air when the ball hits leather. So I'm trying to catch the ball here, boom, and throw. The least amount of time it can be in my possession, the better we are. Okay? It takes a lot of practice. We have kids want to catch the ball here like this, and now they got to turn, and now they got to wind up and throw. The guy's safe. We put a machine up, and I'll just shoot a machine from here to the back of the arc and make them, make them get sideways. And the ball is going to be pretty true with the machine. Uh, we can play catch. It's just the old arm's getting tired. Uh, and just making them work on that. And it's a, it's a skill. Uh, we have races. We'll put the outfielders in center field. We'll put a cutoff man and a cutoff man and have races. They have to pick the ball at the same time and go. And it's amazing how many times they can't hit the cutoff man, even at our level. It's frustrating. Okay? When you're throwing to a cutoff man, remember, it's always better to be down than it is to be up. I can catch a ball if it's coming to me on hop or two hops or three hops, a ball that goes over my head, I can't catch it, okay? Uh, if you've ever lost a game because of a bad cutoff throw, it, it stings for a long time. We had a kid when I was coaching, the, the other team was on second base. They hit a, a routine fly ball to center. He backpedaled a little bit, caught the ball. The guy was just gonna bluff the throw, bluff the run. He wasn't going. Our shortstop went out there. He went over the shortstop's head. The guy takes off. The third baseman goes, leaves third to get it, goes under his glove, and the guy scores on a routine fly ball. Now, obviously, we didn't do a good job lined up because the ball should have come right to third baseman. So those little type of things are just crucial. They're little things, but they make a difference in the game sometimes. Get them lined up, get their hands up, be vocal, try to get them sideways, and again, when the ball hits leather, I want my feet moving. Uh, you know, if, even if they're sideways and, and moving, then we're in good shape, okay? If yes, sir. If the second baseman isn't cutting off the ball to the, to the right side, where's he going? Uh, give me a scenario, like a runner, a runner on second base, and we have a ground ball to right field. The right fielder will be throwing home on a ground ball. Our rule is on a ground ball, we throw two bases ahead of the lead runner. So if the runner's on second and they hit a ground ball to the outfield, we're throwing two bases, we'll be home. If the runner's on first, then we're throwing third. A fly ball, we throw one base ahead of the runner. Okay, so if we have a runner on second, a ground ball to right field, our first baseman will come down here and be the cut. Okay, our second baseman, if he's not going to be, he couldn't be involved in the play, he'll come onto the base for a backdoor play for the runner. So we could actually cut the, cut the first base, could actually cut it and come th four, three, or he could cut it and go back door to first. There's a second baseman helping out right there. Um, again, our first baseman at our level will take every throw home from left center over. Left fielder, third baseman has it. All our throws to third is a shortstop. Now that's if the ball doesn't get past him, the outfielder. If it's the ball hits the outfielder, we're going three, shortstop takes it. Okay? Um, I mean, we have some variations, but that's a basic, basic rule of thumb for, for a high school team. What else? Right, left, right. You, they all don't use the replacement theory or slide step? Or... For ground balls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different terminology. It was just easier. I like the skateboard one. <laughs> it was, I mean, the right, left is just is making sure we're moving into the baseball. Uh, we always want to be catching the baseball moving forward. That's another thing It just kills the level of the athlete is is you watch them in tryout they'll come out here and they'll go right left squat now they're not moving anymore you watch good infielders are always moving okay they're walking what we call walking through the baseball so it's right left catch right left go they're always moving um, 
and, and that, again, that's just practice and skill and timing and coordination. Uh, but again, you can do a lot of that just dry running. We put the ball in the glove, make them go right, left, touch the glove to the ground and go. Again, feeling the different parts moving before you try to put everything together. I promise you this, I don't care who you're talking about, if you're trying to change a movement or a skill in one setting, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna, it's not gonna work. Because as soon as he leaves, he's going right back to what he did. As soon as they hit the ground ball to him. We work with pitchers on doing different things and boy, they look good over there. I got this, they get in the game and by the second batter, they're already doing this again. And it's the same on ground ball, same on hitting. You have to find segments that they can master, segments that you can repeat every day. So, I mean, we have little segments like right, left, touch the glove to the ground and go. Okay, then we have right, left, touch the glove to the ground and then throw. And we do backhand drills the same way. So it's something that we can reinforce every day. A lot of people don't do it with throwing and, hit, and, and fielding, but they do it with hitting. Uh, we've tried to do it on all phases of the game.